Hey guys, my name is Ace Cosplay, and as you can probably tell, I have completely fallen in love with Rogue One. So much so that I have now decided to give myself a promotion to the position of Director Orson Krennic. Only problem is, the one thing that is a bit hard to get hold of now is the blaster. So I thought, at no extra cost to myself, just using things that I already have around the house, I would make my own Director Krennic blaster pistol. So if anybody who wants to do basic weapon builds using things like foam and cardboard, hopefully this will be able to help you, especially if you want to build a weapon similar to this. So first things first with any project like this, you need a little blueprint to work off. So using what promotional images I could find and some reference from other fan builds, I came up with this little blueprint. Obviously this one here, it doesn't have the scope on the top, but I've sized it all down so it fits. I tried to get it so it was the right size. I think it's a little bit shorter than Krennic's one, but Ben Mendelsohn, the actor who plays director Krennic, is 5 foot 11 and I'm 5 foot 6, so I do need to scale everything down even just slightly because I did try to draw it out because in the promotional photos he has his finger down the barrel, so I tried to judge like finger length and sort of do it that way. So once I figured out the size and the shape that I wanted everything to be, it was time to transfer that to the actual materials it's going to be using. But for the main body of the gun, like this part here around the bottom, the thickest part of the handle, that's made using EVA foam floor matting, which if you've seen my videos before, you know I use for a couple of other projects, because it's really easy stuff to work with. It cuts well with a standing blade. If you need to mold it into a specific shape for anything, you can just use a heat gun, and it sticks well together with hot glue, so it's cheap and easy to work with. And for the main barrel down the centre here, this is actually a bit of cardboard tubing from the inside of a roll of cling film, which I do have a tendency to hoard because they're really useful for builds like this. Uh, so if you're thinking of doing like projects like this in the future, I would recommend hoarding such things. So tracing the shape of the blueprint onto the EVO foam, I cut out the shape of the main handle. I did it out of two sheets because the EVO foam is about one centimetre thick for the floor foam mat that I use. And so both of those together gives the handle the right level of thickness. So once the main shape of that was done, I then got the cardboard tube and cut it down to the length I want before gluing it in place on top of the foam. It glues really well with hot glue, you don't have to worry about putting loads of it on there. It's quite sturdy, especially when you build lots of stuff at the top, it holds it in place together. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break that apart anytime soon. So obviously the barrel on the top will hide the little seam that runs down this bit. But if you're using EVO foam, especially with patterns on either side of the mat, you do tend to get gaps in between, especially if you're layering things together, which you can spend a lot of time using like the method of plastic coating or using plastic dip to try and maybe fill stuff like that in. But I decided to try and make it a little bit easier for myself and in my cupboard I found I had some really thin plasters out foam. Looking at it from here I'd say it's one millimetre thick. So this foam I just started gluing from one end and stretching it all the way around the base of the blaster so it just hides all the little seams here. You can see there's grooves in there but there's ones I've added a little bit later so you've just got one smooth edge for the gun. So for the details on the barrel for the most part is just using craft foam so it's the slightly thinner stuff normally comes in a wide variety of colours, again really cheap and I have a slight stockpile of it in my cupboard because again I have a tendency if I see it cheap in a multi-pack I will buy it. But starting from this end you do have this like little circular bit. Looking at the promotional photos it does, it like it's a full circle around the top but the way I made my blast it didn't quite look right doing that so I've just done it so it looks a bit more like a, an old revolver which is what this gun basically is, it's a space aid revolver. So at the sides here again this is just craft foam all stacked on top of each other, cut to shape, stuck on the sides and covered with the plaster oak foam to hide all the seams. Now the main detail on the barrel here is this bit, this is the sort of ammunition pack. So to actually make this bit this is made again using EVA foam, craft foam and a trusty toilet paper tube. So obviously to get the width of this, I stuck a couple of lengths of EVA foam down to the barrel and used a toilet paper tube to sort of go over the top because it was already curved so it beat having to try and make a good curvature out of foam. And so stuck that in place and obviously the foam underneath stopped it so it wouldn't squish straight down. Then because it's got this sort of slightly angled feel around there, I used craft foam. I stuck a couple of layers together because one layer on its own wasn't thick enough. Cut them into lengths and glued them on separately to create the little sort of hexagonal shape and again gone over that with a plaster soap foam but when you go over that only glue on these two edges here so you glue on one side stretch it over glue on the other and obviously cut up all the little seams because what you want to do is then draw the little lines because you've got these little details on the side here that are sort of engraved in the prop 
but I wanted to cut them out a little bit thicker and make it a bit more detail. So I cut that out so that goes through the uh, the layer of plastizote foam. So you've actually you've got a few ridges, and obviously if you glued it all the way around, then you'd have trouble cutting through the glue, and it would look quite messy, and that wouldn't be good. Again, for these sort of little rectangular pieces on the top, I just use the same plastizote foam because the craft foam was a little bit too thick for this detail. You just went over the top and glued them all down. Little details like this part here. This is done with a couple of layers of craft foam and some extra bits added to the top. See, there's lots of little screws around different parts of the gun. These are done using a hole punch to cut out bits of craft foam and then scoring them with a Stanley blade to make them look like the old Phillips head screws that people have been taking the pee out of Star Wars for saying, you know, futuristic technology. And they still have Phillips head screws in their weapons. At the end of the barrel here, we've got a couple of layers of craft foam. See the bottom layer is glued all the way around to the barrel and the top layer was the same as the plastizote foam on the back glued in one part, stretched over and glued again. This is one piece here that you see I haven't actually covered the seam up. And again, using the same technique, just cutting bits out with the Stanley blade, so you've actually got these little divots in the barrel of the gun. And using a little leftover piece of the toilet roll, made a little cone shape at the end here and covered that with craft foam, because obviously it needs to be smaller than the barrel. And just doing that bit out of craft foam meant that it'd be really, really squidgy and it would deform quite quickly. And if you were to paint that and it would really squidgy, the paint would probably start cracking and flaking off at the end. And when you're using brightly coloured craft foam, you don't really want that to happen. So the other main detail that is on the handle of the blaster is these wood panels, obviously not wood on mine, on the side here. Again, cut out just using the craft foam, make sure it fits in all the gaps up here. And there is also on there slight detail that you should be able to see if I get the light in the right place. There's sort of little ridges in there. Again, easy to do, just using a ruler, just scored. Very gently using a standing blade on there so it gets picked up when it's painted, just a little bit of detail. Now for the scope, I was really lucky and had a thin piece of plastic tubing which was just the right shape for the scope. It had to be cut down and then I just used the craft foam to give it the extra little bits of detail front and the back with a little bit of plastic foam there. So that thinner stuff just really helps cover up the seams. And there's two layers of craft foam going around the center of the scope in the middle to make it look like it's been clamped on. And just using the EVO foam again, because it's thick enough, it's strong enough to hold it in place. That was glued on with liberal amounts of hot glue to there. And that was also glued on to the barrel down here, because this little clasp bit is in two sections. You've got the little detailing piece in silver, which was cut out as one. And then two strips of EVA, which holds the scope on, that were glued together separately. Now that's it for the main sort of build of the gun. And the final part is the actual painting, which is always... The most fun part for me, I love painting stuff like this. So when you're doing foam builds, uh, the best thing you've got to do is seal the paint. Because as I said, if you paint straight onto it, then when uh, foam flexes, uh, the paint will crack and flake off. Because it has done on some of my past projects. And then you'll be constantly touching stuff up. And then it will be sort of, at the end, it won't look very good. So the best way to seal this is actually using PVA glue. You don't have to water it down or anything, just bog standard PVA glue. I normally do about three to four layers, depending on what's, what sort of I use on there. I think for this plastizote foam, if you look carefully at here, you can see there's lots of little dimples in there. So more layers on the plastizote foam would probably be a lot better to try and cover that. Just make sure that the PVA is dry before you start spray painting, otherwise the moisture might cause havoc with the paint you're using. So when you're making something like this and you've got lots of different colours of things like craft foam, you want to give everything a base coat of primer. So I used white primer for mine purely because I had no grey primer left, but I would recommend using a grey primer, especially if you're using things like silver paint and darker paints tend to work well with a grey primer. And once that had dried, I just sprayed on a liberal amount of, actually it's a bronze colour spray to sort of match the, uh, the wood colour. For the handle. And then once that was dry I taped off the uh, the wood panelling and sprayed the rest of the gun using a chrome and also a little dust of uh, black over the top just to dull it down a little bit so it's not as shiny. And then once that's done it's time to paint in the details now for the rest of the, all the little details on here I just used enamel paint. I used a chrome enamel paint as well just to touch up any bits of paint bleed that I found came through the, uh, the masking tape as well as the uh, give things like the screws some colour on here that previously wouldn't have been able to do with spray paint. It's a lot easier to paint those details by hand. And then once it's all dry, I decided to go over it with a little bit of watered down acrylic just to get in all the grooves, give it a little bit of a 
sort of highlighting. Even though Chronic Brass isn't very weathered, so I didn't do it very heavily, I just wanted to make it look like it was still a little bit clean, but it does give it a little bit more character and a bit more definition when you get it in all the grooves. So the last thing I have to do is just make the holster for it out of a bit of a fake leather, and it is ready to go. So the acrylic costume as a whole does need a little bit of tweaking, so once that's all done, I will take you guys through, sort of, we'll see everything that I'm wearing, where things were got from, and so if anybody else wants to be the rather awesome director Krennic, then hopefully I'll be of some help. So thank you guys very much for watching. And to change up the ending a little bit, because this is a Rogue One themed video, you are one with the Force, and the Force is with you. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome to the sneaky end of video, a little bit of footage. Who stuck around and noticed this bit? Tell me in the comments. Well, mind you, if people do that, then a lot of people are going to find out. Then it won't be such a... Well, it's not a secret anyway, if you pay attention. But, yes, hello. Um, I do look a bit like I'm getting a bit sweaty. It's because I am. That's because I'm in a very warm little workshop uh, with a kind of a thick tunic, um, a really long cape. And, uh, well, I'm not wearing the boots. I'm, I'm doing a bit of a tarkin at the moment because the boots are actually being modified for me um, by, a, by a little local tailor uh, to make them fit better because they didn't quite fit and uh, I will be taking this whole suit to them to get them to tweak it a little bit because like, things like the cape need to be redone and some bits around the waist and stuff. But, yes, so obviously I don't have the boots so I'm doing a, I'm doing a Peter Cushing and wearing comfortable shoes when I'm filming from the waist up. But I just wanted to take this time because I haven't actually said it on here yet. Um, thank you so, so much for 50,000 followers. It's over that now, it's like 52,000. And it's, 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 I'm, I'm still just gobsmacked that I've gone past, like, I remember I was so happy when I hit my first 500. Like, for me, I thought, right, that's it, I'm never going to get any better than 500. It's like the massive number. And what, my job, I was happy when I got my first five subscribers. I didn't think anybody would watch this junk. <laughs> it's gone better over the years, even though I can admit that, but still. Um, thank you, thank you so, so much for watching and supporting and sending me lovely bits of fan mail through through my Facebook and stuff like that. It's it's very much appreciated. And as you can see, well, it's sort of blurry. If I go this way, it does the is a reflection clearer. There we go. It's sort of double reflection. But my name is Up in Lights. This was um one of my Christmas presents. My name in neon lights, Ace Cosplay. So I'm totally official right now. Totally. But again, just thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. I hope you guys can enjoy what's coming up in the future. I've got a few sort of little videos here and there to do. I've got a list on that chalkboard there of things I'm going to do. And hopefully one of the things that's on that list, as well as the candy man, which I do need to do, is probably because my love of Star Wars is going to eclipse everything. Mm, I, I know I say things on here and things don't always get built, but hopefully a life-size K2SO. Oh, this is a very rambly end bit, and, and it's flashing at me that the, the camera battery's low, and I'm just happily, very happily swooshing my cape. It feels good to have a cape. But again, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Take care.